Hi and welcome to this video. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for 4,000 subscribers. That's pretty amazing. Um, I've been grinding for like about four months now, so it's nice to see that uh, it's returning something. Uh, today, ugh, uh, the crank around, it's not finished, but it's looking like five draws and not much in the games. Perhaps I'll, I'll post a video of one of the games anyway. But I found this yeah, pretty pretty cool game from the national championship of, of Uruguay. And let's actually look at this from the black side for a change. Somebody was requesting that in another video. So with the white pieces we have Sebastian uh, Barreto Granara uh, Barreto. Barreto Granara. Sebastian Barreto Granara. And with the black pieces we have Andres Avia Rodriguez, who is a Grandmaster. So this was played in the first round of the Uruguayan Championship. And the white opened with the English opening. You see G6 by uh, Rodriguez. And Kings Indian and G6 systems seems to seem to be uh, Pretty uh, pretty popular in, in the uh, yeah South American countries for some reason. C three and let's see three because G seven. Let's uh, lower the volume of the moves a little bit. G three, D six, and looks like a standard English. Usually white is going for knight f three here, but white goes for e four. Now what is this? This is the so called a botanic system. So white will play his knight to e two. Usually. Bishop e3, sometimes queen d2, we castle kingside, etc. But black hasn't committed his knight to c6, so he plays c6. And in some cases he can play bishop e6, and after castling maybe aim to play d5, open things up. But okay, what goes on with normal development? And now a6. Now, uh, if black plays a5, white can play a move like... Uh, a3, b4, maybe yeah, for rook b1 first, or you can play bishop e3 or queen d2. But what? Uh, black plays a6 here, and this prevents b5. Now white plays a4. And now, what does black do? This is sort of a stock standard move that you have to know, or motif that you have to know about if you play the king's Indian. Now having just moved this pawn to a6, Black moves it to a5 now. And that's because the b5, b4 square is under control. You can play the knight to a6. And from there you can go to b4 or even on c5 where it's better protected now with the pawn on a5. So going back, you know, going a5 immediately is an option, but circumstances are different after a6, a4 included. Now a5 is, is much stronger because you take the square under control. So bishop b3, white goes on with no, normal apotonic development. Uh, he can play like queen d2 and f4, which is more often than not the standard way to play. But here, with black having not played uh, knight to c6 and not controlling d4, white thinks, okay, I'll play d4 myself here. Okay, bishop e6 by black. And he's uh, asking white to define the structure a little bit. You know, if you play b3... Maybe he'll take on d4 at some states, and I can come to c5 or b4. And this diagonal has been uh, opened up a little bit. And if d5 is played in the game, uh, the center is closed and a bit more defined. So black doesn't mind losing time with his bishop. After c takes, white takes with the knight, and this threat of bishop b6 actually forces knight takes d5, and now bishop d7. So now we see, okay, black probably has an easier time of planning here. He'll play f5. He can always play knight before he, if he wants to block white's uh, ideas on the on the queen side. Knight c3. So it seems like white's queen side play is a little bit slow. And after f5, it's on white to define the structure. Do you want to play f3 and sort of hold on? If f takes e4, you take with a pawn. If f4, you play bishop f2 then try to do something on the queen side or do you play f4 and try to uh, block things white opted for f4 
black took, pawn takes, and now knight b4. And around here it feels like black is taking over at least the initiative. And his next few moves are, are quite natural, queen h4. The queen feels nice on the king side, there's no way to uh, get rid of her. He can support the play and now ready to bring the rook to e8. Connect the rooks, queen to d2, rook a to e8. Rook a to f1 and rook e7, so black is preparing to put more pressure on this pawn here. But now white notices that there's a little bit of weakness in, in black's camp after bishop b6 attacks the pawn on a5. And if we want to defend it we have to play rook a8, which looks a little bit passive. But black finds a different solution, which I liked, he played rook f to e8. Now white accepted the challenge, he took on a5, attacking the knight, where does the knight go? Nowhere. F takes e4. Now if you take the knight, I will play my pawn to e3. And give you a little bit of uh, a side dish with a fork. So white must do something here. And probably he should have played something like rook e2. Seems like black has a nice initiative. He can take on c3, counterintuitive, but um, he's getting some nice play attacking f4. And white has, an option, has some options here. Rook takes e4 or bishop e3. Bishop e3 actually allows bishop g4, trapping the rook. And the other option, uh, rook takes e4. Gives black nice play, some in initiative on the king's side. And I think black is for choice here. This is hanging if you want. But this is what white should have tried. Should have, would have, could have. But he, uh, he took an e4. And now... Black took on e4 with the rook. So now he has gotten two pieces for the rook. But after uh, white regains one piece, white is off the exchange and the pawn. But the bishop comes into d4 and the main problem for white is look at these light squares around the king. And we have this light squared bishop which is completely unopposed. The weakness of the, of the black, of the white king is just too much here. Bishop c3 was played, trying to get rid of the bishop, but no such luck. Bishop e3. Okay, white tries to attack something. Black defense. And now the final push. And it's actually made in six here. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice clearance sacrifice in the end. First move is fairly obvious. It's queen to g4. And now the king here. It's uh, ooh, ooh. just need to get this guy into the game. And after bishop takes f2, that's actually imminent, and white resigned. After rook takes f2, he's up a pawn, but when you're getting checkmated, that does, does not really matter. Rook e1 is coming. Bishop takes, and then bishop to e4. And the light squares finish off the game. Rook f3, bishop takes f3, checkmate. Or if you want to troll your opponent, queen takes f3. And yeah, we can even troll a little bit more here. And then finally give mate. So yeah, a nice win for Andres Villa Rodriguez, who must be the favorite in this tournament. Although I haven't started it extensively. But yeah, a pretty cool game. Uh, thought I'd you know, pick out. Uh, I try to pick out some games that uh, that I find on the net that I, I I think are interesting. And you know, let let me know if you if you like that and and appreciate that. So once again, thanks for the 4K subs, yo. And I'll try to keep on grinding, man. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.